Born in Gambia in 1957, Mr. Mustafa India enrolled into technical training school, which he completed and worked in construction industry for 13 years. Mr. Mustafa is successfully married for 25 years with children. In 1990, he founded his own company called Tag Construction Co. Limited. Which in 1997 he found he changed his company name to Taff Olin Company Limited, which proceeded into international business. In 2012, Mr. Mustafa India registered Taff Nigerian Homes Limited in Nigeria and other African countries. Mr. Mustafa has won numerous accolades, both locally and internationally. Thank you, sir. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. It's nice meeting you, you know, in Gambia, your own country. I'm so happy meeting you, sir. My pleasure, my pleasure. It's always good to be home. Yeah, that's good. Home as in being that's born here. Yeah. My dear is home. Oh, really? Oh, that's nice. I'm, I'm, I'm honored. Now, <coughs> sir, can we meet you? Your name, you? My name is Mustafa Idai. Um, um, I was born in Gambia. Um, fast tracking, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I own Taf Africa Homes with investments in um, eight African countries. Wow. Started in the Gambia um, uh, in 1990 and um, actively ventured back, they ventured in Nigeria um, about six years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have our uh, operations in Nigeria uh, called um, Taf Nigeria Homes. Mm -hmm. Now, sir, so pick me, let's go back to your biography. How did you start the school? How was it before you got to this position of being a great businessman in the estate industry? Well, I started my working life with um, um, a company called Bad for BG uh, um, uh, way back in 1977 um, uh, as an engineer's assistant. There I rose all the way up to um, a site engineer. Um, then I worked with um, uh, two other international companies. Um, uh, when, uh, where I rose um, uh, to a uh, position of assistant general manager. And then in 1990, um, uh, I started my own business called um, uh, TAF Construction, uh, building uh, private homes um, and bidding for construction jobs in the Gambia. And um, yeah, since then um, um, we have evolved from uh, construction to real estate and other business interests. Well, that's Nice. Now, sir, uh, as uh, a real estate, uh, estate expert, what does it take to have a home in Gambia? Um, in the Gambia, uh, the challenge more is on, um, there are challenges and there are good occasions. Um, uh, the challenge more is on, is on mortgages. But what it takes with us um, um, is that land is quite affordable. Um, so with us, we offer um, uh, sites and services. We offer core houses, meaning semi-finished, and then we also offer finished houses. Um, we have about three different estates in the Gambia, and uh, you can own a parcel of land as low as uh, $5,000 for a parcel of land. Wow. And then uh, you can go all the way as high as owning a mansion for uh, about $200 something thousand dollars or $300,000. Oh, okay. wow. I'll uh, probably can have you, Mr. Lange. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. So, as a, um, a high quality business man, how have you been able to survive so far? Well, you know, I, mean, I, I, I survive uh, based on the, the ability to face challenges and be together. Um, um, I have always um, gone into areas where there are challenges and where I think that. Um, 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 opportunities are untapped. Mm -hmm. Typical example is um, um, uh, coming over into real estate, into real estate. Mm -hmm. Obviously, any Nigerian, um, uh, you know, would hardly come out outside of rivers to do any business in the market. Mm -hmm. So we went into into into, into rivers, deep inside the market delta, and, and created a small hub, which is the, the rift of real estate. Oh. So, so um, we, we look at opportunities all over Africa. I mean, I, I am, I am Pan-Africanist. I believe in the African continent. 
And um, where most entrepreneurs will not venture, that's where I go. That's nice. So, what does it take to be a successful businessman? Success comes with, with, with hard work and honesty. And um, it's not only a businessman. In life, if you want to be successful, you need to work hard. There's no easy way to success. Mm. And then, and you need to be honest in all your dealings, in relationship, you know, dealing with your clients, dealing with your suppliers, you know, dealing with your workers. You know, everything you do in life, if you want to succeed, there are two things that you must do yeah, right. Yeah. And you must be, you know, that is working very hard and also being very honest. Mm. Oh, now let's talk about um, you. It's, it, it's not about you starting um, the business. It's that gift. Well, how how do you cope in going to Africa, living your own country? You go to Nigeria. You just talk about you being in River State. You know, venturing into a lot of business. Then I'm ready to succeed. You come in smiling. What are that strength? What gives you that strength to achieve all that? What is your passion? I mean, um, in, in, in entrepreneurship, um, focusing on entrepreneurship, um, uh, without passion for anything, you can't succeed. Um, uh, and that's what gives you the drive. Um, uh, there are other factors and other characteristics that you must have to succeed. But the drive uh, for any business is the passion. If, if you don't love it, I mean, if, you, if you don't have a great passion for it, there's no way you can succeed. Um, um, most people think that um, entrepreneurship is about making money. Yes, money is important, but you must find deep passion for any business you want to do that really leads to success. So for me, my, I have a great passion for real estate development. I, I have a good taste for it. And um, uh, for that reason, I mean, uh, that's what gives me the drive. Yeah, when we about you just talked about you are retired. Retire in what sense? Is it business? Or just, you know, you do, I usually don't stay at home away from my time or? Well, it's relative. I mean, um, um, if, you, if you were to see me probably even five, six years ago, there's no way I will wake up at 10 o'clock. Um, I would probably be up at 5 o'clock and go to sleep, <laughs> probably going back to bed at midnight, busy running around. But I have always planned that um, at 60 I would love to retire. Um, uh, and um, I hit 60 in February. Wow. And um, thank God to technology. I mean, um, um, the retirement for me means slowing down. Um, I don't clock in 10, 12 hours a day now in my business. Um, I am not active more than maybe three, four hours. You know, and also what I've what I, what I, what I done over the years is to create a succession plan. Um, I am here in the Gambia. I haven't been to my project in Nigeria for over a month now. And it's, it is running smoothly. The reason why it's running smoothly is because we have a good structure. I don't have to be there to look at where money is being spent, who is signing the checks, these ones have been taken. A reason being that we have built a good Successful plan, we have a good structure, uh, we have very good uh, personnel who are responsible for, for the words. So, what I do is mostly um, um, communicate with them, you know, uh, obviously through technology these days, through WhatsApp, emails, you know, uh, on the phone from time to time. Yeah, yeah, but, but my retirement doesn't mean that you know, I just uh, cut off 100%. But my routine has to change. And as you grow older, then obviously you, you move away further from, 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 from the business. Mm. So let's talk about a little about your family. Your you know, boy, what are uh, the things that you see there? So you go to take the family that I have. Oh, my, fa my family, let me tell you, family for me is in the African sense. You know, family means African sense that you're gazing at. The Africans is the wider, wider, extended family. Uh, you know, um, uh, but the closer um, um, uh, European way of seeing family are uh, the very close your kids and your wife, yeah. and um, uh, um, um, uh, basically your kids and, and your wife. But but in the Gambia here, really, uh, for me, family means much more. 
So with my wife and my kids, we, we thank God, we give glory to, to, to Allah, the Almighty. I mean, I am a father of five girls. Wow. Um, uh, with one wife. <laughs> uh, we've been married for over 30 years now. That's nice. And um, um, my kids are all involved in my business. Uh, you know, um, and, and they, they have been brought up in this. They've been brought up young as they are going to elementary school. Oh. And look, this is yours. One day you need to step in. So um, uh, we've guided them to be significant in what we do. Um, uh, they've read different um, uh, uh, professions and um, but they, they complement the business. I love mentorship. I, I love um, correcting young people. So um, um, every young person I see is part of my uh, big family. Uh, you can be a parent to my daughter. Uh, you know, and I, I, I love to see you know striving young people. Um, um, and I, I guide them, I mentor them, I give them courage. Um, and um, for me, it's fulfilling. So I have a very big family across the African continent. Mm, that's nice. So how do you realize? You turn young and you want to realize. How do you realize? What are those things you do to calm yourself out of stress? I sleep very well. I sleep a minimum of eight hours a day. Oh, minimum. I sleep very well. I mean, I, I thank Allah again that I don't carry stress, you know, when I sleep. So hardly would anything make me awake, keep me awake. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the time, there are problems in life. I mean, I, I go through certain problems, but I learn to shed it off when I want to sleep. So I wake up fresh, and then face the challenge, and will surely come out with a good answer. Welcome to the Garden City of Nigeria on the arousing summer spectacle displaying the fast and fascination of perpetual advance. Paved roads, gargantuan structures and green landscapes in full bloom. Port Harcourt signifies many definitions and charms for the roving traveler, but one thing that draws unfailing attention is the massive infrastructural evolution, putting the garden city on a determined progressive pedestal. It's the result of considered housing and urbanization schemes, bringing the continent's finest estate developers to its source. They include Africa's most ambitious real estate magnate, Mustafa Njai. We started in uh, 2013. 2013. Um, um, uh, you know the project, it's a, it's a, pro it's a PPP, moving a public-private partnership with the, with, the, with the River State Government. And um, um, uh, it's a partnership um, uh, that gives equity uh, to the River State Government um, of 20%, and then uh, TAF um, um, Africa Homes as 80% um, um, of equity. Now we enter the Rift TAF Golf Estate. It's a uh, pride.
opposition in this government. They've missed that the last 20 years or so. Only very few of them who compromise their principles, uh, who compromise ethics. I mean, Tafa was one of those who refused to do that, who said that they want to do things but the right way. And of course, he left his home country after starting these things, as the Minister of Local have indi indicated. He initiated this in back uh, from uh, Yarambamba, Burusubi, and many other places with little resources. But you know, the idea is there, the brain is there. With his determination, he was able to accomplish something. Now, uh, in the process of trying to look for Gambians that we believe can make a difference, I think Tafa was one of those identified. He's not the only one who will be accorded this opportunity. All Gambians have this, who we believe are capable and able, certainly will be given the opportunity. But Tafa was first on the card. I mean, because we heard about what he's done in Nigeria, and it was important to come and see for ourselves, not hearsay, but something that we believe we would have uh, our own eyes on it, and so that the Gambian people will know what Gambians can do outside Gambia. Those who have been deprived of the opportunity in their country went outside, were able to get it done, and so an impressive job knowing the type of country he's dealing with, a country like Nigeria, over 200 million people, for you to come all the way, small Gambia, to come and do such things here, it's a remarkable, wonderful project. And I tell you that he's been an ambassador for the Gambia, not only in Nigeria, in Mali, in Senegal, in many other countries where he has replicated such projects. I remember boarding a flight with him in 2002 uh, on board a flight going to Bamako. I saw him carrying doors. You know these doors? Uh, he was carrying doors and I asked him, he said, I've got a project of 5,000 you know, units here in Mali. I'm sure he's forgotten that. I can still remember that. So I think, to be honest with you, from what we found here, we know that UN have indicated that the Gambia needs 90,000 houses. We have sort of housing over 90,000 houses. That's what we need to house the Gambian population. And our resources in terms of land is not that much because we try to concentrate ourselves within the greater Banjul area. And you must understand the indigenous of Banjul, uh, of that area in the Combos, live on this land. So we must draw strategies and work with companies who have the experience of dealing with communities. And I have no doubt that Tafa in Nigeria, knowing Nigeria, how much they believe in land, what they do with indigenous and all that, for him to be able to do it here in Nigeria. So I have no doubt that that experience replicated in the Gambia would make a great difference.